Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, I'm going to be doing the summary for the air quality study, which I've published a bunch of episodes on, and this will be part of that playlist. Unfortunately, uh, work demands have kept me away from this, but I've finally gotten around to this. So basically what we're going to do here is just summarize the different plastics and what we found with each. Now before we get going, my standard disclaimer, I'm not a doctor, haven't played one on TV, nor will I ever. Um, even if they offer me a lot of money, I'm not going to play a doctor. Anyways, so these comments here are mine, and, and this is what, you know, uh, my, the conclusions which I've come to from my testing. And I think they're actually pretty interesting, so let's jump into it a little bit. So what I've done is I'll do some overlays on the screen here of this in color. I printed this out on laser so it's black and white. Uh, but it'll give you a little bit better idea. So I, I've classified these mainly uh, upon, based upon particle release. Because one of the things that we've talked about in prior episodes brought up by Gothboy UK was this meter is probably not sensitive to all the VOCs because we know that uh, printing hips, there's a sweet smell. Sweet smell is typically styrene, but I really didn't see a VOC on it or a volatile organic compound or a total volatile organic compound in there, but yet I knew something was there. So again, this is a $100 meter. Now, one of the things, I've been very happy with this meter, and I'll talk a little bit more about that later in the episode, but back to this, um, again, the focus has been throughout this whole whole uh, series is what is the particulate release? Because if I'm measuring particles, there's something there, no matter if the sensor is sensing it as formaldehyde or VOCs. And one of the things, I've, I've classified these from greatest to lowest. So the greatest, very clearly, ABS is king of the hill for releasing particulate matter. Now, one of the things I want to be very clear about here is this i've invested a ton of time in the series in in these tests so this isn't one test i i've actually did a base test and then i did a repeatability test across the board for these and sometimes like with abs actually several tests to determine repeatability if what i was seeing was accurate or one off so these are all repeatable test results. So I want to get that out there before somebody writes me and says, oh, that is one off. No, no. Uh, I, I really looked at this, and, and again, I've got a ton of man hours in this. So ABS is clearly the largest offender. Uh, and not only did we see the highest particulates and above typical, typical safety levels uh, for particulate release, but we also saw significant or measurable uh, formaldehyde releases, which this was really the only plastic that I saw a formaldehyde release. And this is one of the reasons I went back and I did ABS several times in the existence of the formaldehyde was there in each test. So... There it is. Now, the other piece is, again, um, it had the highest uh, VOCs, or volatile organic compounds, or here, total volatile organic compounds, where they take all the VOCs, kind of lump them together, and say, here you go, Bob. Uh, so, and, and again, it also had the most particulate matter. So, there's no question that the test results with this little meter match what was seen in the, some of the professional tests, which I've, you know, mentioned in other videos where I've done these and also have links to all that stuff below where I have the resource page. So it's very clear I would not print ABS in your home. Um, and again, this is my opinion, in your home without external ventilation um, because it's just, I mean, right here it is. It releases some nasty stuff. So with that being said, let's walk down the list. So one of the newer plastics, and actually I did not plan on testing this, but I had a number of requests, is ASA, which is a bit of a cousin to uh, HIPS and ABS. I, I found a, uh, ASA a very interesting plastic to work with mechanically, um, and, and I will work with it more, but again, while I did not see, you know, any formaldehyde in very low VOCs, I still saw a pretty significant particle release near that of ABS. So it's putting out something that I or my family could be breathing in. So I will only print it with external evacuation uh, on my printers. I won't print it where the gas is released into my home. The next one 
is hips. And again, hips, again, cousin to ABS and ASA, uh, pretty much the same as far as particulate release. A little bit less than ASA and ABS, but still right up there. And again, I don't like the sweet smell of it because that is a styrene smell. And I believe that's the particulate matter that's being read here is styrene. So, uh, again, I will not print this without external evacuation. So ABS, ASA, and HIPS, I'm only printing where I evacuated it out of the house. And if you look back in, this play, in the playlist for this series, I've placed uh, how I've built uh, evacuation an evacuation system for my workshop that draws the air from the printer chamber and exhausts it outside of my home. Um, now to nylon. Nylon falls down the list about fourth. And, and again, we didn't see uh, any VOCs from aldehydes. Very low particulate count, but I did see a repeatable particulate count. Um, and again, nylon, I don't print a lot of it. Usually I only print it for specialty parts. Uh, so I'm not overly worried about nylon at this. I would do some uh, HEPA air filtration around the printer for this because the numbers are still up there a little bit. So, uh, but definitely not as bad as the prior three. Uh, again, moving on to TPU. TPU found it very low as far as particulates. Um, so actually, um, actually, I think TPU and PLA should have been flipped on this, this chart. Um, but again, TPU is, is seemed to be fairly benign. Again, we didn't see VOCs, formaldehydes, really very low odor, no odor uh, that I notice anyway. And again, very low release. And I do a lot of TPU, so I tested this a number of times, and it seems to be pretty repeatable. So I like TPU a lot. Uh, so I feel pretty comfortable with it. Now, as I've mentioned before, in my shop, I do run multiple HEPA air filters. Uh, and I have actually, one day I have to install it, I've purchased the mother of all HEPA air filters for my shop. Um, but I haven't installed it yet. So I've got uh, two smaller units that run in my shop area. And, I, and I'm pretty comfortable for, like, TPU that that's, that's fine. But again, my opinion, not a doctor. PLA. PLA, again, I think it's pretty inert, um, I, but we did see some particle release. I'm not really surprised. I think you're going to see some particulate release in general. Um, but again, I think the HEPA filters, my opinion only, work very well for this. And then finally, the surprise out of the crowd is PET-G. And again, I retested this several times, and this is kind of like crazy that there's almost no release out of PEG. Um, I don't really get it. I, I expected to see a little bit different because it, it's glycol modified. I know I had a couple folks write me and kind of explain how the glycol works when I did that uh, uh, episode. I do have a little bit of chemistry knowledge, but I am definitely not a chemist either. And I did track what they were saying and it does make sense. Uh, but again, PEG, I comes out the cleanest. So I, I definitely really looking to do more with PETG probably than any of these other materials besides TPU because I use TPU for a lot of constructive type projects if you will. Um, but anyways this is really what it's come out and again I've done some overlays as I've talked through this. Now the meter, I, I really enjoyed this meter. I've gotten my 100 bucks out of this meter. I'll have a link to it below. I've used it for a couple other things external of this plastic testing, and it has been very, very handy. Let, let, let's put it this way. Uh, so I definitely highly suggest this if you're concerned about general air quality, um, both in your shop, your home, things like that. This guy is the uh, thing to get. And again, for 100 bucks, I found it very worthwhile. Now, understand it's not perfect. And as we've already talked before in several of the episodes, you can't for 100 bucks have a device that's going to absolutely measure everything. But the one thing I found is, especially on the particulates, it does seem to be pretty accurate. So that's the piece I liked. And it does seem to recognize, I'm going to say, general volatile organics and obviously formaldehyde. So anyways, hopefully you found this interesting. And, and again, I kind of wanted to share a summary of, of this, of how it all looks when it comes together.
And uh, let me know in the comments below what you think. Uh, I may do some other tests of this nature in, in the future. I know a lot of people wrote, say, well, why don't you do some colored filaments? Is blue better than red, better than green? I may do some of that in the future, but I got to tell you guys, I put so much effort into doing this series. I'm a little bit burned out on doing air quality tests. Uh, so maybe when I get a little steam back, I'll come back and visit some of those other things. And then I also might visit some of the newer plastics that are coming out too to add to this list. And uh, I'll, I'll publish this uh, chart uh, uh, you know, out on the uh, resource page too, and I'll have a link to that below. So if you want to get a copy of this to see what it looks like, it'll be out there. Uh, anyways, Swag Shop will be up there. Let me know in the comments below what you think, and we'll catch you guys in the next video. Cheers. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel.